In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age, all ages, amen. <clears throat> Welcome back, everyone. Today is the third uh, part of our new series on the Creed. We entitled it, We Believe. Um, and uh, uh, we thought it would be important to study the words of such an important prayer <clears throat> as it relates to um, not only the dogma of our church, but how we live out our faith. Um, so <clears throat> as we've been saying, this is a reminder of what we believe and more importantly, why we believe uh, these things. So um, before we get on to the next part of our series, just a quick summary of what we've covered so far. The first time we talked about um, why the creed is so important for us. <clears throat> um, and uh, last time we discussed the first part of the creed where um, we say we believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, or Almighty, and it's the shortest and the oldest and most easy to accept, um, except for the atheists and agnostics and some of the Oriental religions. Um, <clears throat> And um, when we were going into that part, we basically said there are three issues um, or three tenets of, of this portion of the creed. Um, we have to believe, if we recite this part and proclaim this part, we believe that God exists and we believe that God is one in nature and in essence uh, with three persons. Um, <clears throat> and um, then we began to describe some of the characteristics of God and we got to a point saying we can, we can probably also describe what God is not um, to help us in our um, contemplation of who God is. And on top of that, we also begin to discuss what he does and what he does for mankind especially. And so um, last time, again, <clears throat> we, we saw God as father first and foremost, and we saw him as almighty the one who can do and does all things. Um, <clears throat> and the last part of this, uh, God willing, we'll discuss uh, this time, um, the, the description of God as creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. And of course, when we say God here, we, um, uh, we are describing, as we'll see, first God the Father, but also um, in terms of creation, he creates with his son and with the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then last time we also kind of said, it's very hard um, to comprehend God because he is God, right? Um, and St. Athanasius helps us understand this by saying God is good and merciful and he takes care of um, all of the souls that he have created. It's his nature that... <clears throat> Um, can't be seen or comprehended, and he transcends every created substance. Um, therefore, it's natural that we, the human race, can't be able to come to a knowledge of him, a perfect knowledge of him, until we live with him in heaven, right? Why? Because we're made out of nothing, and, and we have a beginning. God has no beginning. We are limited. God is in unlimited. Um, and then he says, for that reason, well, we still need, God wants us to get to know him more. Right? So what are some things that he does to help us? Um, first and foremost, St. Athanasius says he made creation, right? He made the created nature by his word um, or by his son capable of only perceiving him in and through his works since he himself remains invisible by nature. So because he's invisible, he created the visible things for us to help us to get to, get to know him. And we'll... Um, um, uh, touch on this point throughout this talk as we describe uh, the creation and how it pertains to our salvation and relationship with God. And there's many verses in scripture uh, to help us. <clears throat> so, um, uh, and as we'll see, be because this, this is important for us to know God is through what he does. If you look at the creed, the majority of the creed is focused on uh, when God took flesh and all of the things that he has done on behalf of mankind. Um, so <clears throat> let's um, continue our discussion uh, uh, regarding the creator. So 
if anyone wants to study creation, you go to the beginning of the Bible, right? Um, as uh, the first words of scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, um, just as a side note, here again, we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the first few verses of Scripture, the concept of, of Scripture. When God said, that's the Son, right? Because he is the Word or the Logos, right? The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and here, uh, where sometimes when we just see uh, the, the name God, oftentimes, especially in the Old Testament, it's referring especially to God the Father. Um, so, God made all things. It's a very simple uh, concept, um, but he is the one who originates life, the one who initiates life, the one who is the source of, of all being. Um, and it's important to realize that he exists outside of creation, um, and he is omnipotent and eternal, like we were saying before. Um, and uh, also, <clears throat> Uh, some of the fathers help us. Uh, there's many, many fathers have written about the first few chapters of, of the book of Genesis. Um, and uh, that helps us in our com comprehension of God. For example, St. Cyril says the ability to create belongs to him alone, to God alone, and it is part of his glory. Uh, and St. Justin Martyr also says, we have also been taught that in the beginning, he made everything out of nothing. Um, because of his goodness and, and for our sake alone. Why do we stress on this point out of nothing? Because there are many other religions and many other people who say, okay, maybe God created or he fashioned or he formed. Um, but it's kind of like saying, if I, if I bring, um, if I'm a carpenter, you bring me a piece of wood and I'll shape it into a nice statue, right? <clears throat> so some people say that, God uh, created the world, but he, he had matter that existed, and matter existed outside of God or in, in uh, conjunction with God. And of course, the fathers say, this doesn't make any sense, because if God is unlimited, why would he need matter to be there so he can form it? Why can't he just create the matter out of nothing? Um, <clears throat> and, and that's what we believe. If he is the Almighty, you know, and, and he could fashion all things, why would he wait for matter to exist and then shape it into something uh, nice? <clears throat> so um, that's kind of important for us to realize. Um, and uh, if God only formed things, he would be limited, he would be weak, um, and he could not be called the creator. Um, because it's one thing to fashion things or to mold things, right, or to shape things that exist, but it's another thing to bring it into existence and then um, uh, perfect it, okay? Uh, okay, so <clears throat> uh, that's the, the first point. Um, then when we say he is the creator of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen, I know it seems obvious, but um, it's important to realize that, again, we're talking about two things. Um, we're talking about heaven and earth, not just earth, right? And all things that we can see on earth, all things that we, we can't see on earth. Uh, of course, in heaven, almost everything we can't see, correct? Um, unless <laughs> unless you're, you're say, a saint. Um, so one of the most important passages in scripture that, that help um, solidify this important concept is in Colossians 1, um, uh, 16 and 17, right? Um, St. Paul says, for by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, right? This is where most likely the Holy Fathers got these words of the creed. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, these are talking about the angelic hosts, like we say in the liturgy. We know uh, of them, but we don't know really uh, about them in, in detail. And this is probably something that we'll um, understand more when we get to paradise and to heaven, God willing. Um, <clears throat> so St. Paul continues by saying, all things were created through him and for him. 
and he is before all things, or he existed before all the creation, and in him all things uh, consist or live. Um, and this is, um, I think it's more important to ask um, who, when we talk about creation, instead of how, right? It's the same three letters, but we re uh, organize them, right? Most people uh, focus on how was the world created. But for us, it's not as important as who created the world. Um, and so God created our physical word, world out of nothing. Um, and some people say this is six 24 hour periods. We won't go into the detail, but it's more likely that um, uh, it was six different periods of time, um, which most of the Orthodox theologians um, and the fathers uh, hint towards that. Um, and we don't have too much time to discuss the different theories out there, but especially with things like, you know, the Big Bang, there's many problems that, that have to do with that. Like going back to the concept of matter, the, um, the Big Bang says, okay, there was a spontaneous um, uh, eruption from, from existing matter, right? Um, well, where did that come from to begin with? There's no answer uh, to that, right? Um, the answer for us is God, right? Where did all the energy come from? God. Um, what caused its release? God. Uh, what organized it thereafter? God. Um, <clears throat> and what, even when we go into the probabilities of these things, and there's many researchers out there, like the pro probability of creating the world to sustain life is, you know, infinitesimal that it could have happened by chance. Um, it's kind of like saying, you know, um, I take my computer, right, um, and break it up into the million different parts of it, right? And then the probability of throwing up all of those parts in the air and having it land uh, exactly like the, the, the computer that we have, you know, it's, it's almost impossible. There's a chance, <laughs> but it's a lot more likely that it's going to be a bunch of, you know, uh, pieces, <laughs> not even anything resembling to a computer. Um, <clears throat> so, but the probability of that happening is a lot uh, more likely than having the world that we know it um, uh, made by, by chance. Um, and then on top of that, some people say, okay, if the world was created by chance like this, and it just so happened. Well, there's one thing, the probability of something to happen in one point of time, and then the probability of that thing continuing for thousands of years um, without harm or without fail, that's, that, that's another proof that there is an intelligent creator out there who is sustaining the world as well. Um, so um, again, here St. Paul explains all things are made through him, but also for him. That's, that's the why here, is God, God created for us, um, but also because he wanted us to be um, with him. Um, and uh, just touching on the point of intelligent design, um, even the fathers talk about this. Um, uh, one of the early church um, fathers, uh, Lactanius, he says, if it is impossible that anything should be more powerful than God, who must necessarily be perfect in strength, power, intelligence, and follows that the one who shaped matter created it also, right? Um, and this is going back to the point of um, he, he created uh, everything out of nothing, right? It is easier to believe that the universe was made by God than to deny it. It's a lot more difficult to prove that it just happened by chance and to even accept it. Um, for nothing can be made without intelligence and design, going back to that example of the computer. Um, Saint Ephraim the Syrian says, the flock depends on the shepherd and everything that exists on earth grows by the power of God. Um, <clears throat> so um, th this, is, this is kind of, a, a, an obvious point, but unfortunately, there are many people who, who believe that 
that the world was just, it just happened, <laughs> right? Um, and the more you go deeper into science, um, you actually have more proof um, that there is an intelligent creator who designed and fashioned uh, the world. Uh, Origen, a great scholar in the early church said, I can't understand, he talks about this part, uh, I can't understand how so many distinguished people, even until today, have thought the world that, that the world was uncreated. That is, it was not formed by God the creator. Uh, they prefer to say that it came into being by chance. Again, the same idea, probability, thinking that so great a work as the universe could exist without an architect or designer, right? It's the same thing of if I have a bunch of building materials, right? <clears throat> and I snap my finger and or the wind picks up and all of a sudden it, it forms a strong, you know, 10-story building, right? What are the chances of that? <laughs> Zero, basically. Um, and okay, if you're talking about a building, what about the whole world? <laughs> um, so, or the universe for that matter, right? <clears throat> so he says, this seems to be quite absurd and to be the opinion of people who are altogether ignorant of the power and intelligence of uncreated nature, okay? Um, so uh, that's the point of regarding that we believe that God is the creator, right? Um, what did he create? Simply, the creed says, heaven and earth. Like, like what St. Paul said. Um, and uh, let's talk about heaven for a minute. Um, the Psalms say, the heavens declare the glory of God and shows his handiwork. Um, and <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, for example, says, I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, right? Not believe that there is a God. But I can't conceive how he could look up into the heavens and say there is no God, right? Um, there's a story <clears throat> of uh, uh, around, I think, the 16th century or so, um, when there was a French soldier speaking to uh, a peasant, and they were, like, basically occupying them. Um, and the, the, the French soldier was saying, we'll tear down your churches, we will burn your book, sacred books, we'll destroy your pictures and icons, and demolish everything that reminds you of God, <laughs> right? And so the simple but wise peasant who was faithful said, but, but you will leave us the stars, right? <laughs> um, of course, he, he did, had no answer. But here is, he's saying, okay, you can destroy everything in this world. But if I look up to heaven and I look at the stars and the moon and the sun, like that helps me believe that there is a God, that there is a creator. Um, and uh, that's important for us um, to kind of realize that just look around and see the greatness of God. Right? And, and St. Paul talks about this to the Romans. We'll get to it in a minute in, in the first chapter where he says that these things were put in, intentionally by God, the creation, to help especially the non-believers accept that there is a God. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, again, because God is almighty, he created all things. And as um, we say in the first chapter of uh, the gospel according to St. John, we say all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Um, and <clears throat> uh, St. Arrhenius says, uh, God always had in himself the word and wisdom, the Son and Spirit, right? Um, and we'll talk about time in, 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 a, in a couple of slides here. Um, but when we say God created, we said Fa Father created through the Son and the Spirit. Okay, by whom and in whom freely and spontaneously he made everything uh, that exists. I, I think this is easy for us um, as believers to, to accept. Um, going back to the, the part of visible and invisible, seen and unseen, um, uh, St. Basil comments on, again, this, this uh, passage in Romans chapter 1 which I think we'll get to in the next slide. He says, um, <clears throat> the knowledge of God that exists comes before faith in him, uh, as we can see by looking at creation. For we recognize wisdom, power, goodness, and understand all his invisible things from the visible things, from the creation of the world, right? Um, uh, so we extrapolate in our minds and with faith um, that there is an invisible God by looking at the visible things that the invisible God has created. Okay, um, and he says, in this way, we accept the ruler of these things as our own Lord, since God is the creator of the entire world, 
and we are part of that world, God is also our creator. Um, and we'll get to that uh, again in, in, in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> so um, we feel his invisible grace through the visible material. The same thing in the sacrament, right? Is what is a sacrament? It is God's sending us his invisible grace and power and healing and salvation through the physical things that we do, the prayers that we recite out loud, right? the acts uh, that we do with the physical material, whether it be water or wine or bread, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, so there's a physical thing going on, but more importantly, there's a spiritual thing uh, or an invisible thing that's happening um, uh, on, a, on a deeper level, right? So two things are happening at the same time. So we can't just focus on the physical, but more importantly, what the physical reminds us of uh, spiritually, okay? Um, same thing with uh, the saints, right? We connect to the invisible saints through touching the, the visible icons or the relics of those saints, right? Um, uh, so what's more important? The things that we don't see, but we use the things that we see to help us see with the eyes of our heart, not with the eyes of our flesh. Okay, um, so <clears throat> um, here's the verse we were talking about, right, in, in Romans. Um, St. Paul says, uh, for since the creation of the, the world, <clears throat> um, his invisible attri attributes are clearly seen, right? Um, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He's saying the non-believers are without excuse because they see his invisible attributes, attributes through the things that we can see, okay? We see that God is almighty. We see that God is wise. We see that God is, is loving and all-powerful and um, uh, caring for his creation when we see at the, the, uh, the amazing and beautiful and, and uh, perfectly made uh, creation right? Um, <clears throat> also, St. Paul says to the Hebrews, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed or formed or created by the word of God, right? So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible, right? Um, okay. Uh, so I think that kind of um, helps prove the point. So what about time? <laughs> I know we're getting a little f f philosophy here, but this is important to help us in our discussion with those who don't believe, right? So, well, um, so it, time is actually part of the creation. Why? Because when we say in the beginning, God created, right? Well, wasn't there God before time? Yes, <laughs> right? God is timeless. He is above time right? The only reason why we need time is for the creation, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, but if you look at scripture, there are two beginnings that it talks about, right? Um, in Genesis, the one that we know, in the beginning, God created the heaven, the earth, and all things, right? But then there's another beginning, um, which is the beginning, right? In, in uh, the first, uh, so we have Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created, but then in John 1.1, 1, 1, we see in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, right? So here it's talking about the beginning of God, which is before the beginning of creation. Well, when is the beginning of God? We don't know. God is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, right? <clears throat> so um, it's kind of like I tried to uh, like show it, you know, on a number line, for example, right? So the beginning of creation is a certain point, right? That, a definite point that we know. Right? Same thing at the second coming, which hasn't happened yet, but uh, it will be a specific point in time. But before the creation and after the second coming, that's infinite. Right? That's, when, uh, that's why God is the beginning and the end. He, is, he goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Right? But for us and for the creation, we were created at a specific point in time. The world was created as a at a specific point in time. The Lord Jesus Christ came in a specific point in time, right? Um, and the second coming will happen, right? Um, so all I'm trying to say is that time as we know it is between the creation and second coming. And then um, everything is timeless, right? <clears throat> um, and this is the end of the ages to ages, right? Um, and when scripture talks about last days, or the end of times, right? 
um, usually it's talking about the coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ, the first and second coming of Christ, right? So St. Paul says this in, in the beginning of Hebrews. Notice all these are chapter one, um, verse one. God, who at various times and various ways spoken times past to the fathers by the prophets, he's talking about the Old Testament, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, right? So these last days, I, I guess you can say from the incarnation until the second coming, that's the last day, right? Because the world was created in the first six days, right? And we're technically in the seventh day. Um, and the eighth day will be after the second coming. Does that make sense? Um, and that's the first day of the new week or eternity. Okay. Um, so why are we going into all of this uh, detail? Well, um, because to see that time began when God began the creation. And um, some religions believe that time is cyclical. But we, we don't believe that. You know, um, we don't believe that things repeat itself, you know, kind of like Groundhog Day, <laughs> I don't know, like, no. Um, so time has a beginning and it has an end, and then we will be with God who is above time. God will, right? Um, and so uh, that's important to understand in relation to the creation. Another thing to understand in relation to creation is evil. Some people say God created evil, or God is the author of evil. Absolutely not. He is all good, right? And he created all things good, as you see in the book of Genesis. But um, with regard to free will that he grants, especially to um, uh, mankind, he gives us the choice to choose between good and evil. Like he chose, he gave the choice between Adam and Eve um, to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil or not, right? Um, <clears throat> So some people say, well, that's not fair. Why is God being mean? He knew what was going to happen. Yes, but he wouldn't be all loving if he didn't grant us this freedom. Um, he doesn't want to force us to love him and to follow him and to obey him. He wants us to do it out of um, a desire to be with him and out of goodness, right? Uh, the same idea here is matter or the creation is good in essence, right? Um, it's not bad. So there was heresies of, of the pagans and even until today where people say, you know, everything physical is evil and everything spiritual is good. And we say, no, God created the, the creation so it couldn't be bad. But man uses it for, for evil um, sometimes, right? Um, and that's because of the free will that, that we have, or that we abuse, right? Um, so... Um, same thing with the devil and the, the, the demons, right? They were one time good. They were angels serving God. But um, because of the will that was granted to them, you know, to choose to be serving God or um, not, um, they were cast out of heaven uh, because of that choice that was made. I don't want to go into the detail about, you know, is it the same as our free will and is it as limited? I, I don't know, <laughs> right? And maybe that's not really the time for our discussion. Um, but ne nevertheless, that evil was pre present because they had that choice, at least that one choice. Um, okay, um, so when we talk about God in relationship to his creation, St. Athanasius says, the wonder of creation cries out, for a confession of a creator. So, you know, the, um, the heavens declare the glory of God, the earth declares the glory of God, right? And, and his handiwork, right? Man reflects, um, just like man reflects in himself um, what he makes, like an artist, you can understand an artist by looking at their painting, right? You can understand an author more by reading their books. You can understand an architect by looking at their creation, the building, right? And the same thing, God can be seen and known and understood more when you study his creation, right? Each one of us bears within ourselves an image of, of the Most High. We're created in the image and likeness of God, right? So in ourselves, even, we can see um, a glimpse of God, <laughs> and that's intentional. Um, because it helps us 
and attaches us to our Creator and our Father, um, the Almighty. Okay, um, <clears throat> and regard, regarding this point, I think this is probably the, the most important part here is when this pertains to God's relationship with man, right? Um, again, St. Irenaeus says, in respect of his love, the Creator is our Father. Um, but in respect of his power, he is our Lord, right? And in respect of his wisdom, he is our maker and designer. So, so this is why God is many things to us, right? Um, <clears throat> he's a creator. He is the Almighty. He is our Lord, right? Um, and well, what is man to God? <laughs> man is, in a sense, the apex of, of God's creation. Um, and even the Psalms, like if you read Psalm 8, um, uh, King David says, you know, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you have visited him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, right? Um, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So uh, we can go deeper into this, but basically the psalmist is dumbfounded by how great uh, God is, but also how much he takes care of man, that, that he is mindful of him and he elevates him and provides everything uh, that he needs, right? Uh, uh, also, when we pray the liturgy of St. Gregory, it's the, same, um, it's the same concept. You know, all of these things you have done for my sake. Um, and, um, and even when you look at the creation, you know, at the very end, he saved the best for last, and he prepared the whole world before, for man, b before he created um, Adam. And then he had the animals pass by and he allowed, you know, Adam to name uh, these, these animals, right? Um, and he gave him or he gave man the, the dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, all the earth, right? So um, some theologians say that man is a microcosm of God's creation, or he is basically a small world in himself. Um, what do they mean by that? Um, basically, like we said, God created the heaven and the earth, right? The spiritual beings and the, the material beings, right? Um, but when you look inside of man, you know, what is he made of, spirit or flesh? I say both, right? Um, so here, man has, in himself, he is the, he has both a piece of heaven and a piece of earth, right? Um, and when you look at our Lord Jesus Christ, he did the same thing. He's the perfect man. Why? Because, again, um, he united, um, uh, like, th through the Holy Spirit, um, who, who came upon the womb of the Virgin, right? <clears throat> um, and he, again, he took, he took man um, and united it with his own person, okay? Um, so God is spirit. Um, but also the Lord Jesus Christ, the person Lord Jesus Christ, is fully God and fully man in his one person. Um, so I don't go too much uh, into this, but this is, you know, a beautiful thing when we say he created all things visible and invisible, um, and he created heaven and earth. But just by looking at man, like let's say you don't have eyes to see the creation, right? Um, but in your own person, you hopefully, you feel that you have a spirit, right? And you can touch your, your flesh. But here is the, the synergy between, between the two. Um, <clears throat> and so Christ, though, is, so man is, because he has these two parts in him, part of heaven and part of earth, he is that bridge. He is what some fathers say, the priest of creation, right? Um, because he is the mediator between uh, these two things. Um, he hears the message from God and works in the earth to glorify God and to beautify the earth and, and protect it and serve it. Um, <clears throat> and um, the Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect priest. He is the perfect man um, who shows the, the perfect mediator between God uh, and creation. Um, one of the Orthodox priests wrote, if man has a physical link to the animal kingdom, he also has a spiritual link to God. And Christ is our link to the, to the Most High. Um, <clears throat> and 
this helps us reflect on, on being created in the image and likeness of God. And that, um, as St. Paul says, that reflection, when we look into a, a mirror, um, it transforms us to be more like him. Beholding as, in a mirror um, the glory of the Lord. By, as, as we're beholding you know, this image, um, it is transforming us to be more like uh, Christ. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, we'll just leave you with a few more quotes before we finish. Um, St. Athanasius, he says, God is good and merciful. He takes care of the souls that he has created. Um, and it is his nature that he cannot be seen or comprehended. This is kind of, I think this is the same, this is the same quote that we said in the very beginning, but hopefully it makes uh, more sense here. We were saying it's, it's natural that we can't understand um, or comprehend the depth of God. But one of the means that we do so is the creation. And even if we remind ourselves that we are also part of that creation, um, we can perceive God more through um, studying that creation and even studying ourselves. Um, <clears throat> so um, hopefully that was uh, a helpful um, description of what it means that God is the creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. Um, and to help us glorify God and to see God more in his works, um, uh, whether it's the, the sky, the earth, the sea, anything that is in them, when we study science or biology, when we study um, history, when we study um, physiology or all of those things, you can see God's imprint in his creation. If, if you're looking for it. Um, and there's even many stories of many scientists and, and many um, people who, who were non-believers, but then when we saw, they saw the depth of God's creation with an open mind and an open heart, they believed um, completely. Um, and so uh, we shouldn't lose hope in those who don't believe. Um, but maybe if we can't point them to scripture, if we can't point them to the church, at least we point them to the creation um, and, and ask them to open their minds and their hearts to see the glory of God. Um, and so God willing, next time we'll, we'll focus on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll probably take us uh, several um, uh, discussions um, because there's just so much regarding the person of, of Christ as it pertains to our faith. And, and our unity uh, with God. Uh, glory be to him, now and forever, and to the age of all ages. Uh, amen. We'll see you next time. God bless.